The 133rd China Import and Export Fair, Canton Fair, closed on May 5 with an export transaction volume of $21.69 billion on site, lower than the pre pandemic level of $29.73 billion in the same period in 2019, indicating a bleak foreign trade situation. According to a report by China's state run CCTV News, the 133rd Canton Fair offline exhibition closed in Guangzhou on May 5. The fair had over 2.9 million visitors, and the on site export transaction volume was $21.69 billion. The Canton Fair had both online and offline participants from 229 countries and regions, with 48.6% of the purchasing businesses from countries along the Belt and Road Initiative. Official data from the Chinese government shows that the spring and autumn Canton Fairs in 2019 had transaction volumes of $29.73 billion and $29.288 billion, respectively, before the pandemic. This year's Canton Fair was the first physical exhibition held after the pandemic, and the transaction volume was lower than pre-pandemic levels. The Canton Fair has always been regarded as the Chinese Communist Party's most important window and barometer for foreign trade. The current Canton Fair which claims to be the largest in history, was heavily promoted by the government when it began on April 15. However, exhibitors on site complained in videos that they had not gained much, and questioned whether the organizers intentionally created scenes of long queues at the entrance. In fact, there were very few foreigners on site, with Chinese people filling the screens. There were also reports that the fair was not busy, with more exhibitors than visitors. Many Chinese exporters have expressed that they have clearly felt the weakness of the global economy, with orders declining. Some exporters told Reuters at the Canton Fair that they had frozen their investments, and some had reduced labor costs in response to weak demand. On April 30, official data showed that China's manufacturing activity contracted in April. The Purchasing Managers Index PMI, fell from 51.9 in March to 49.2 in April, below the threshold. On April 28, the Politburo of the Communist Party of China held a meeting mentioning the need to place greater emphasis on attracting foreign investment to stabilize the foundation of foreign trade and foreign investment. The Hong Kong newspaper Ming Pao reported the next day that the Politburo's instructions indicated that attracting foreign investment and stabilizing foreign trade would be extremely difficult for the authorities. The world trade data now shows signs of a change in the globalization pattern. The global trade system is undergoing a structural transformation, which will lead to a reconfiguration of international supply chains in the coming decades. The Chinese Communist Party CCP, will be the loser in this transformation. According to Bloomberg, the structural change in the global trade system is mainly attributed to two factors, companies are reducing their dependence on a single factory or country, following product shortages, price hikes, and transportation disruptions caused by the COVID-19. CCP virus, pandemic, at the same time, governments, especially those of the United States and European countries, want to ensure the supply of critical materials such as semiconductors and rare earth minerals, in order to prevent the world trade from splitting into geopolitical blocks. This transformation, known as reglobalization by some, will take several years, but the current trade data has already provided some relevant clues as to who will be winners and who will be losers. The escalation of geopolitical tensions between China and the United States has fueled speculation about partial decoupling between the two countries. Although the value of U.S. imports of Chinese goods and services reached a historical high in 2022, there are signs that U.S. tariffs are changing the bilateral trade flow. According to analysis by Chad Baon, a senior researcher at the Peterson Institute for International Economics, the value of goods subject to tariffs imposed by the U.S. on imports from China fell by about 14 percent compared to pre-trade war levels in 2017. Over the past five years, U.S. tariffs, export restrictions, and subsidies have prompted U.S. companies to shift their imported products from China to other countries. Since former President Trump began imposing tariffs on thousands of Chinese goods in 2018, the total share of U.S. imports from China has decreased by about 3 percentage points, which has been partially filled by products from other Asian export countries such as Vietnam, India, Taiwan, Malaysia, and Thailand. In other words, Chinese manufacturers who hope to avoid U.S. tariffs and shorten their supply chains are expanding their businesses in countries such as Vietnam, Thailand, and Mexico. For the U.S., Mexico is becoming a key procurement source as a substitute for China. The highly integrated supply chains between the U.S. and Mexico, as well as the preferential trade treatment stipulated in the U.S. EMCA, are helping to create investment opportunities across the border. 
importers and even some Chinese exporters are helping to diversify their supply chains. They are competing to purchase industrial zones in Mexico, where the occupancy rate reached 97.5% in 2022. Efforts to improve trade relations with Europe are causing the U.S. to rely more on imports from Europe than from China. The U.S. and Europe suspended bilateral trade tariffs worth $21.5 billion in 2021, put an end to a plain manufacturing dispute that dates back to 2004, and launched talks to reduce overproduction of steel and aluminum. After this, signs of structural reform of the global trading system began to emerge. In the past year, U.S. imports from Europe increased by nearly 13%, while U.S. imports from China increased only by 6%.